two or three recalls and then the phone call. Yeah, you've got a contract. <gasps> and how great, because, you know, to have a, an ongoing paycheck. <laughs> that was fantastic, wasn't it? Amazing. That was great. So not many shows do that. I mean, well, it has changed to the, the Netflix formula. You know, there's so much now. But back then, that was pretty good for us as actors and having the renewed contract. And then if your mates didn't get the renewed contract, like I remember the uh, 9-11 moment, I think we'll all remember it for different reasons. But I think seven of our mates got cold on that day as well, didn't they? Lost, losing their jobs. Yeah. Talking about leaving the bill then, was it your uh -huh. decision to go or did you get pulled into the room and as I did to be told that, you know, it, it, it was coming to an end, you know, the character was going to move on or did you, um, did, did you decide that? I decided. Good girl. I was tired and actually I think I got to the point where I was feeling extremely broody. All my mates had got married and had kids years before. I was feeling like I really was, yeah, I was, it was a bit of a mixture, but I was, in hindsight, I was tired. I was a bit worn out. So I went to speak to Paul Marquis and I think of, you know, looking back, if I'd said to him, can I have a six month break? He might have given it to me, but I just said, oh, I think Debbie needs to have a little, close the dressing room door and she's had a great run and thank you, but don't kill her off. And I yeah. remember, <laughs> I think I got really tearful. I was tired. I always know when I'm overworked or tired, I cry. And I remember saying to Paul, that's, you know, please don't kill her off. Oh. Anyway, he didn't. And he, he, was, he was lovely, actually. Paul was, he was, he was good. And he, yeah, he just, he let Debs go and be a mum, which is what I did. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was great. I was excited because I, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I'd just done four and a bit years. I went and did a theatre job in Basingstoke, a new play. It was a three-hander and a few TV visiting episodes. And then I had a baby. So I just went on a new adventure. I just mm. was like, okay, this is it. This is, I'm not going to be relying on a nanny, can't afford a nanny. I'm going to have this baby and bring it up. Oh. So I, yeah, I just made up my mind. I moved to Malta where we've always had a family home. And my, my mother's side, both her parents were Maltese. And I just found that a really healing time, just nurturing my newborn and learning about my side of the family who were from there and Gozo. How long were you there for Natalie? I did a year and a half and then I had a, quite a weird year and a half back in the UK, couldn't settle. My agent had retired and I was feeling quite lost so I went back to Malta and had some crazy brain waves that sort of fell tits up, but really good learning curves. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be going into the hotel trade and I oh. won't be going into a uh, villa building. Oh yeah, I did it. I tried it. Uh, there was a villa that it basically fell down and <gasps> I had all these plans that my son was going to grow up and, you know, all these kids are going to come around and play with him and <laughs> oh. fell down. And then I put some money with, a business partner into a, a boutique hotel which at the time we were ahead of the game I remember you doing that I remember that uh, yeah it went tits up we couldn't get planning for the upper deck which was really important it was in Valletta there were three old cities the three cities in Valletta one of them was where my grandmother was born so there was this whole connection and storytelling in my head so it all made sense but actually the Maltese authorities didn't allow the heritage site to be changed. Oh. Fair enough. Actually made me think time's up on this island. And I went to Gozo and lived on Gozo. That was another experience. So I used to get the ferry, which was 20 minutes on a Monday morning over to Malta, send my boy to school, pick him up at 12.30 because it was Mediterranean sort of days. <laughs> stay at my mum's place and then on a Friday head back to Gozo. So in all of this, there were problems with the building, 
we had to sue people it went to court and waiting around for all this to happen which in a mediterranean country takes a long time uh, i just rented and then decided to come back to england and when you came back to england where did you make home south coast by the sea needed to be by the sea. i love it it was the best move my son's really happy in school. I'm just trying to get the rest of the family to move this way, which is nearly in position. Parents are, are waiting to move this way very soon. So all of that's good. Oh, that's lovely. And, and you'll have your little brood all together. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel that this next bit of life is exciting. Don't know where it's going. I've got so many notes for different things that I'm always jotting stuff down, ideas, you know, I did a, a yoga pop-up retreat thing out in Malta as well. There are all these different things I did try. Yeah. But now it's, uh, it's back to the UK. I've been working as a producer on a friend's company. That's been interesting because it sort of gradually brought me back in, but on a different way. And I like it because you're around your, your people, your, your gang. So that's nice. And revisiting relationships and friends from the past, like speaking to you, darling. And also with Steve Hartley the other week. I know. I just happened to be in the area near him and I just thought I'm going to, I've got to see him. We can see each other if we're in the park. So yeah. So I took the dogs for a walk and had a good catch up and it was like yesterday. I do love Steve. I, I, I really do have a lot of time for Steve. He's, he's always been, um, for me, you know, he's like a rock there that's, that sits there and, you know, for good advice. and. Um, He's yeah. always hilarious and he's always so positive and so lovely. Um, I, I've got a lot of time for Steve. Yeah, good storyteller. Yeah. I sat in this cafe and he was absolutely on one. And, you know, I could just, <laughs> I remembered the, you know, sort of went back 20 years. Wow, this was the Steve I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all good. Who else do you keep in touch with from the bill? Because, I mean, we, we have never really lost touch. You've always been on my Facebook or, you know, I could have found you very easily if, you know, if we needed to chat, we could. We're very much back in touch now. Who else do you see? Who else have you seen over the years? Who have I seen? I've seen Beth, Beth Corden Lee. She was uh, Clapham. I was in Clapham at the time. She's South Coast as well now, I think. Yeah. Diane parish when I go up and see my parents she's not far from them yeah oh, there's loads we all sort of there's quite a few down on the south coast that you bump into Carl Carl Collins ah. Chris I've spoken more to Carl I haven't seen him although he's he did pop down last summer I think there was a moment when we were out of lockdown he went guess what I'm on your beach <laughs> so I, I caught up with him that was great always a laugh love Carl yeah there isn't anyone from the cast who i'd be like oh I, you know they were all all are great people and if this has got to happen you know we've done these virtual catch-ups now we've got to get face to face together imagine all us lot in a room again natalie how insane that would be it will be a riot and we are going to do it it will happen soon and there's all this talk it's hilarious because people have got wind of something maybe happening to the return of the bill yeah I don't know. Who knows? But either way, we will all get together and have a big party. It's it's too long in, in happening, really, isn't it? It's been totally years and it'll feel like it was about 20 minutes ago that we were all, you know, on the bus with our coats on, ready to go to set. And it's just once you've been through that sort of thing, you, your pals are always, it's exactly the same. And I think um, even more so for me and you, because we went through that whole Kilimanjaro um, adventure together which I do want to just uh, pull the chat round to slightly so mm. the Kilimanjaro trek was back in 2001 and we did that for the Bobby Moore Fund now how did you get approached to do that I think it was put out to all of us I think in the cast do you remember the pigeon halls where we used to have all our mail yeah scripts were delivered I think in there there was something saying would you be like would you like to be part of the channel five soap stars up a mountain and i was like what what's this but it was i think the invite that's how it was put to us wasn't was it the same for you so for, for me now um i i don't know where i'd be could have been anywhere but i come 
back from wherever I'd be. And you and Simon and Matthew Crompton mm-hmm. had all signed up to do this thing. And, and me and Matt were talking about it. And he's going, oh, yeah, we're all going to climb Kilimanjaro. And we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I was like, why has nobody asked me? <laughs> like, this is what I do. This is my interest, mountain climbing and activity. So I went straight to Simon because I think, didn't he know Stephanie Moore? Yeah, I think and she did. might have approached right. him. And then he sort of reached out to people, I think. And, and I remember going up to Simon going, you've got to get me in this. I have to do this thing. This is, this is me all over. I want to do it. And then um, I remember he, he said, okay. I'm like a little bit taken aback because I was like, <laughs> like, yeah, God, I got like a psychopath trying to jump into a party uninvited. That's how it <laughs> felt. And then um, we obviously went off on this trek. But do oh. you remember? Go- <laughs> do you remember? Going to the airport to catch our flights. <laughs> oh, what can you remember? Don't say I was wearing no, something. No, no, no. So something I don't remember. <laughs> we all met at Heathrow, and of course, we had the film crew following us now. Yeah. We did like a hello at the airport. And then me, yeah. you, Simon, and Matt went off to the champagne bar. I was about to say we got. Bit pidney, didn't we? Because we knew we couldn't drink for the next week. Because <laughs> we were on malaria tablets as well, do you remember? Yeah. And I, I, well, we must have had about, I reckon we had about five or six glasses of champagne. <laughs> and then we boarded the flight. No, 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 we didn't. We were sitting there and our names were getting shouted out. Oh, and yes. Natalie Rolls, Suzanne Maddock, <laughs> Matthew Crompton <laughs> make their way to flight where it is now you know the doors are closing and we were running through the airport to catch that flight and when we got on board the flight I I was nearly I was really sick (laughs) but it was I was white you know when you're completely drained of color and you're shaking and you're thinking I am going to vomit and what it was I was on malaria tablets that you weren't supposed to drink alcohol with so I spent like the 12 hours it was to Tanzania Oh, no, we went via Ethiopia, didn't we? We went via Addis Ababa. I, I got to Addis Ababa and was in bits. Yeah. And then we had to do the connecting flight to Kilimanjaro. And I think by the time we got to Tanzania, I was okay. But it was like, you know, don't drink anything else on those tablets. Suzanne was the, the main point. But we almost missed the flight. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's such a good memory. I've forgotten. Another thing I've forgotten in the Grey Matter. And do oh. you re- what do you remember of the track itself, of, of the Killy track? I remember you and I waking up on that last summit climb and we got the giggles because we needed the pee and to actually get your kit down to have a pee. And by that point, you didn't care because you were sort of five days in and you just didn't mind standing off the trail, (laughs) dropping your cacks and (laughs) having a pee. You didn't really care. And of course, it was dark. And I just remember having hysterics with you on that last climb. Mm -hmm. And also, I remember you trying to write your diary. I think we were both trying to write something. We just It was impossible. The altitude sickness was awful. I was so glad I was staying in your tent. It was a, it was just great. I mean, I know, we were it was curious about it as well, though, weren't we? It was a big thing. It wasn't easy. No, I it would, was, it I was would not easy. I would do that again, Suze. I would love to do something with you. I would with you as well. I, I definitely. You, um, we're just pretty, we're pretty mellow characters, I think, and we, we find the positive in things. And it's the laughter that I remember most of all. Do you remember? This is, you're going to hate me for saying this, and we might have to get the scissors on this bit, Ollie. But <laughs> Natalie and I, when we got to uh, Tanzania, the whole thing is there's no toilets there. They've got these long drops. Do you remember the yeah. long drops? Yes. And it's like a little disgusting shed that you go in with a, literally a long drop. It's this hole <laughs> in the floor that drops your, your feces into like a, a pit at the bottom. And we were all terrified of these long drops. And I was going to that, oh, my God, I really need to poo. And you were going, so do I. <laughs> And we were like, should we do the long drop? And you were going, no, it's so disgusting. So we went off on our own little track to find somewhere to that man with the gun? The witch? The guy with the gun. He was, he was, they were like security for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you were going to say? Well, he, he went to me, stop! Do you remember <sighs> he screamed at me? And I'm like, what? And he went, 
just stand still, stand still. And I'm going, what is it? What is it? Thinking something's on me. And it was, it was a tick. He'd seen a tick going up the inside of the leg of my shorts. And I, I, he went, there's a tick and you have to open your trousers now. And I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? And I dropped my kex and he, he went like that and he took the tick off the, the back of my leg. <gasps> and I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> Put my trousers back on again. <laughs> oh, the fun. Do you know what? I, I tell my kids now about these things because you can't, you couldn't wash there. There was no showers. And when me and my husband went off to do Everest, it was where me and you did the, what was it? It was just over a week, wasn't it? Up and down. And mm. when I went to do Everest, it was three weeks up and down. Oh. And literally there was no showers. You can't wash. And I came back with completely dreadlocked hair at the back and had to have it all <laughs> cut out. And, and I'm saying to my kids, we didn't wash for three weeks. You know, couldn't wash your hair. You're that high up that the sun actually cleans your clothes. You hang your, your socks out in the UV rays. You can't smell anything. And and they're just like, you are just a pig. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be the same, though. Yeah, yeah. They'll do that one, something like that one day, and they'll remember all those great stories that mum's told them. It's brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant stuff to hand down. And real, just so, oh, just real. Do you know what I'm looking at right now in front of me? I've got mm. our summit picture. Uh, of me and you up that mountain. Uh, and you're pointing to where it says Africa's highest point in the world, highest freestanding mountain. And I'm quite swollen. I remember I was sort of swollen with the altitude. Yeah, we all were. All our faces were like t- two times the size. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that sound swelling. guy. Do you remember the sound chap with the boom? Oh. He literally crawled. He was oh. so ill. <laughs> and there was... <laughs> Uh, Simon didn't make it, bless him. That was frightening because he had to be taken down on a stretcher at some point. Yeah. It was pretty hairy. Quite a few, quite a few of the guys didn't make it. Me, me and you did. And I, I've got to say, I've never thanked you for this, but, you know, I act like I'm all this big, um, you know, action woman and I'm, I'm well hard because I'm a brown belt and I can do this and I can and climb mountains. <laughs> and I'm a scouser, you know, comes with the blood. I've got muscles in me spit and all that. But <laughs> when it came to it, if you wouldn't have been there, you know, when we got to the top and then yeah. they said you've got about 300 metres to go to get to the summit, I was ready to turn around because I was just like, this is shit and this is hard and I can't breathe. And you were the one who went to me, come on. And you kept me going and you got me there. Oh, oh, I'm really, I'm tingling with all these memories. It's fantastic to hear. Yeah. Do you remember? I remember doing that as well. I remember saying, I've got to put my hat on. Do you remember I had this obsession with my hat? Yeah, you did. I wanted to wear a different hat on the top for a photo opportunity. I remember that. You got really obsessive over it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What is that? Where did that come from? Oh, you see, yeah. If I was a social media person, I'd be going, quick, quick, get the picture, get the shot. <laughs> so but do you was... remember I was going to you? I can't find me sunglasses. And I was yeah. going in every pocket. <laughs> I've lost me sunglasses. And you went, you're wearing them, babe. They're on your face. <laughs> <laughs> we did. I th- It was such a weird feeling being up so high. And I remember flying that last flight to Tanzania we'd stopped and we were flying over or at level with <gasps> the mount top do you remember and we were I going oh, we're and gonna the pilot be yeah the we pilot actually said it. yeah he said uh, ladies and gentlemen if you just like look outside the left hand side of the window uh, we can see the top of Kilimanjaro through the clouds and we looked and went <laughs> oh my god we were like staring at the people's faces thinking that's gonna be us next week yeah that was really scary amazing and those people that helped us up that you know took us that knew the mountain top they took us up the route that wasn't really used and we had that amazing day where we just had to climatize with that water do you remember it was like a big lake yeah we just stayed there and talked and talked between other people and it was yeah, I'd love to do something like that, Suze, again. Please. Definitely. Well, we want the world to open up because, as you said earlier, 
I do feel like I've been robbed of a year of travel because mm -hmm. you're a big traveler, I'm a big traveler. I believe, you know, going and seeing different cultures and, 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 and experiencing different foods and, and places and experiences is so much better as homeschooling for the kids. So my kids get dragged everywhere that I'm, I'm capable to go and, and mm. lucky enough to go. But a year of staying at home, I've got to say, has done me the world of good because it's made me appreciate that ability to travel a lot more. And now I've got my tick list because I think with you being a big traveller and myself, um, I've, I've done most of the places that I've always wanted to go to. I've done these um, incredible places. And so I've always sat back and gone, well, I haven't really got a bucket list. But having the year where you couldn't go anywhere, it mm. made me go, actually, I have got a bucket list. I really need to go here, here, here and here. Um, so where, if you can go anywhere, Nat, where would you go next? Hmm. South America's always been on my list, but that's obviously not going to be I mean, really soon. Mm. You know, there's bits of England that I don't really know. Wales and Scotland. That made me, lockdown made me think that as well. Like we have so much on our doorstep. And really, do I really want to be going anywhere right now? No, I'm fine. The weather's good. The weather's sweet. I've got the sea at the end of the road. I'm really lucky. But if I could go this afternoon to Gatwick <gasps> and go to Bali, I think I'd go there right now. <laughs> Would you? Why, why Bali? It's just en route to Australia. I've got lots of friends who moved to Australia. And I've always said to my boy, that's what we would do. Just go and have a complete body holiday, you know, just get completely massaged and eat amazing food and swim in the ocean. And then go and see all the friends and family that live in Australia. Yeah. Which I did do actually. When I finished the bill, a friend of mine was opening a hair salon. He's got a few salons here in the UK called Mahogany. And that was one of my sort of, that came up. And it was a two week trip and the bill was massive over there mm. and people turned up to this hair salon in Sydney. <laughs> uh, that was a weird one. But, you know, you're just saying about how things happen and you never know what's around the corner. That came yeah. out. out the yeah. Blue. Where would you go? Where would you head off to? Um, oh God, I'd, I'd, go ev I've, I'd go everywhere. And, and again, I, I love my travel. Um, my brother lived in Greece for quite a while. He lived in Naxos. No, um, and I used to go over to Greece just a weekend here and there. I, I was quite lucky to be able to just rock up to my brother's. Hey, I'm here again. He'd be like, oh, friggin' here she is. <laughs> and um, so I would love to take my kids now to revisit the places in Greece, you know, that, mm. that I loved so much. And it's not that far away. Good plan. I've dragged the kids a lot of places. Um, I've never done India. Would you Would you try to... Uh, uh, India's in a mess at the moment, so I know it, it won't yeah. be happening for a long time, but would you and your mum try again to, to do that India trip? I'd love to take her. I did go when I was 27. I went on a yoga mission over there and spent a month on a moped finding myself wow. in uncanny situations. Incredible. Um, that was with a makeup artist from a job and we just decided to go and it was fantastic. But I only went to Kerala and Goa and I really wanted to do the other palaces and Maharaj routes. So that's something I would love to do with my mum. Mum, if you're listening, we will go one day and make yeah. your dream happen. Yeah, I'd love to do that. But sadly, India's in a real mess right now. Yeah, it seriously is in South America as well. It's, it's so very sad seeing all that on, on the TV. Let's hope the world's going to start opening up for us. You know, it's, um, yeah. it's one of those things. Now, Nat, what I wanted to do, you're going to probably cringe at this a bit. You know, what? it's all fun. It's all fun. I wanted to do a little quick fire round with you. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Um, so I want you to answer. Don't, don't think. Just, just, you know, just reflexes. Just give me those answers. So Chandler or Meadows? Chandler. Rickman or Smithy? Rickman. Go ahead, girl. Um, Nick Klein or Mickey Webb? Mickey Webb. Uniform or CID? CID. Sun Hill or Tanzania? Ooh, Tanzania. <laughs> Mountains or the seaside? Mountains. Oh, now that did surprise me. Um, snow or sunshine? Mm, I love both, but I'll go sunshine right now. Year 2000 or year 2020? <gasps> oh, crikey. 2000? 2020 was shite. <laughs> 
a nice cup of coffee or a glass of bubbles? Glass of bubbles. <laughs> and finally, leather pants or jeans? Jeans? <laughs> <laughs> you used to rock your leather pants, darling. <laughs> I can't wear them anymore more after that <laughs> i've got one pair left here that are just like never worn since might wear them for you next time love yes you must listen lovely this oh. has been an amazing catch-up and i reckon we could talk for another three hours but if i don't go for a pee in a minute <laughs> there's, gonna, there's gonna be trouble <laughs> oh, babe. Mother, of two, mother of two and all that um <laughs> Thank you so much for today. It's been amazing catching up with you. I'm finding out things about you as well that I never knew. And, you know, I didn't think that was possible really, but it, it, it's so nice to catch up with you, mate. Tent stories. I feel like we're back in our tent. And most of the time I've sat with my eyes closed, just listening and laughing. And yeah, thanks. I feel alive today. Thank you, my love. Thank you, Oliver Crocker. And let's do it again. Well, let's do this again. And we can start to plan what trek we're going to do or what we'll do for charity. And we'll try and get some of the other bill people involved. And something not virtual, something where we actually go and do something. What a great idea. Let's do it. Let's plan it. Oh, yes. Suze, love you. Love you too, babes. And, and thanks, everybody, all those listeners out there. Let's have a round of applause for the lovely Natalie Rolls. Thank you, my sweetie. Oh, over and out. <laughs> Do you know the only the only thing I didn't get in there and I really wanted to, so if you don't mind, can we do a pick up? Do you mind that? It's one one thing if you don't mind, hon. Go for it. Okay, so um I'll just uh <laughs> 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 So Nat, I just wanted to say when we were talking before about being in the bill and, and it was such an amazing show, and you think back and you look back to all of these different scenes that stand out for you and that. One thing that I've got to say is, have you read Ollie's book yet, Witness Statements? Because I've got to say, any Bill fan out there who hasn't read it must read Witness Statements. So I, I bought a copy off Amazon and um, Ollie actually um, wrote a little message in it and signed it for me, which was really nice. Oh, will you do that for me? Is that the way to do it? You can actually buy it on Amazon and there's, there's a, a comment. So he's going to get inundated now. Is, will you sign me book? There's like a comments thing. And I put, hi, Ollie, it's Suzanne. Would you be able to sign me book for me? And he can throw a little signature in there for you. But what I found with that book was I, I didn't know the show we were in until I read the first couple of chapters of that book and the gravitas of how groundbreaking the bill actually was as a show because i'm reading these memoirs of like the people who were there from day one and honest to god the things that the bill did for the very first time like handheld cameras that we now take for granted in shows mm -hmm. that we watch and and i would honestly i'd recommend it get a copy and read it because it made me feel if this is possible even prouder to be on the bill because Aww. i didn't realize what i was part of in that whole history sense so i'd definitely recommend that do you know i don't think i was really aware that ollie had done that and i think i saw a picture on i think on one of the platforms and he was posting <laughs> a few and it was a little picture of him or a little video of him posting them off you know hats off to him and mm. i know he's i think he's doing the next one as well and i'm going to be ordering i'm going to order today and oh, i must add this in my grandma was 104 when she popped off. And next to her bed, she had a picture of the Queen, obviously the Queen's message, and a picture of Tom Chandler because he'd written to her and in then... a signed photograph. Not anyone else of the family, the Queen and Tom Chandler. <laughs> that is my grandma. Have you told Steve Hartley that? Yes, I have, because we were laughing. There, there is oh. a connection, a Tottenham connection as well, with his mum and my, I think it's my dad's side, which was my, my grandma of 104. So, yeah, weird connection, weird thing. Ollie, Amazing. Ollie, I'm going to definitely get witness statements. Even the, the title's brilliant. So I'm yeah. really looking forward to reading that. and have, I'm going to have a look now. So everybody you've heard are here from the Bill cast. Buy the book, honest to God. Get it now. Now. Hello, this is Ben Payton, and you have been listening to The Bill Podcast, presented by Suzanne Maddock, with special thanks to Natalie Rolls.
Produced by Oliver Crocker. Co-produced by Alana Dewar, Dan Evans, Sarah Kuiper and Alex Mockler. Executive produced by Glenn Allen, Chris Booth, Daniel Christopher, Andrew Dyack, Paul Dunn, George Fairbrother, Erin Gordon, Luke Hegarty, Edward Kellett, James Ledane, Stuart and Jen Morris, Claire Norbury, Justin Pitt, Tom Sherrington, Patrick Stratford, Sarah Went, and Michael Weil. Brought to you in association with georgefairbrother.com and Misty Moon Events.